Hey folks, Sega Sonic fan here, making yet another video on the virtual ribbon install. This is the virtual ribbon that I designed that you can uh, contact me for purchase, which is a permanent repair for the Virtual Boy uh, Flex Cable. And to give you an idea of what it looks like when it's all said and done, is this, this is a, a set that I completed for one customer. And of course there are ribbon cables that plug in and uh, plug into the unit. Now you might ask, why am I making yet another video about this? Well, I wanted to show uh, the video quality. Uh, I wanted to improve basically the video quality because uh, I now have a much better uh, HDMI monitor set up with the microscope, which will make it a lot easier for folks to see what I'm doing. And also wanted to include some of the steps that I omitted from the previous video and um, yeah, just kind of give better visuals mostly though, just to make it easier for everyone. Now there is one significant thing I'm going to be doing differently, however, is uh, using a piece of a broken Virtual Boy, uh, which I can put under the microscope and solder very easily actually. Now I do not recommend taking this piece out of a working Virtual Boy unit. Uh, there are some alignment uh, screws that are actually glued in place and some very, f some fragile, you know, plastic clips and stuff. This is a very not a fun part to remove, but if you have a spare one, by all means, this this process is the fastest way to doing a uh, a board install. So without further ado, um, here are two fully uh, OEM virtual ribbon uh, PCBs, and what I'm going to do is show you all here on the new HDMI microscope monitor that I have hooked up here why it's so important to be careful of the actual LED array, which is under the clear plastic here. And hopefully you can make out the reason why is these little wires here. All those little tiny wires everywhere are um, making contact with the board. And so what you really don't want to do is get flux or really anything anywhere near this clear assembly. And that is why I do. I also do not recommend ever using a hot air reflow station or a you know blow dryer hot air gun around these things because you really don't want to damage those wires. And uh, fortunately, so far I've not damaged any of those wires, but uh, it's not a not a winning streak that I'm wanting to uh, give up. So uh, I'm going to start with the. I'm just going to do a single one of these for the video because all the steps are the same and that'll cut the video length in half. And what you'll get in the kit is you'll get one of these boards and one of these boards and your connector. And you'll actually get uh, two sets of that plus two ribbon cables. So this is not even quite half a set, but this is all we'll be needing for the install right now. Uh, this is what we're gonna start doing first though, is putting the, uh, the uh, connector here on this board. And I didn't show this in the last video. It's fairly straightforward. I'm sure most folks, I haven't heard of anybody having a problem with it, but just for a completionist sake, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show that on this current video and my preferred method of, uh, of soldering this connector in. And this is actually the first step I usually do is I get, I get those boards out of the way. And I'm gonna go ahead and move up to the HDMI monitor. Um, now, you, some of you, some of you that regularly view my channel might know or have noticed that I actually can record with this HDMI microscope. However, um, from what I can tell so far, uh, I cannot record when it's being output uh, to a large monitor like it is right now. And I don't feel like doing this work scrunched down on the tiny monitor when I have this nice one. So I'm just going to point my camera at it. And um, I think the quality, you know, judging from my, my phone screen right now, looks good enough. But that's the reason you're not getting a direct capture of the, mic the microscope output right now. It's because I actually would like to see what I'm doing on a large screen. It is quite nice and makes my life easier. So you'll notice the, uh, the white frame there around the right corner uh, has been included to help with alignment. And there's actually a bit of metal under the top part here, which is a mounting... Um, some mounting pieces to help you mount the connector basically. And so I usually start with that and I'll go in here with my solder and my iron and just get that mounted nicely. 
Of course, when I'm doing that, I'm also checking the alignment of the row of pins here, making sure nothing's off center. Um, and then using that white uh, right angle or left angle as a, as a guide. And you'll see here that uh, it's still within that angle, but you'll notice it, it comes a little bit off center, just a smidge for those pins. However, it's well within the tolerance. It's actually um, not even close to being outside of the tolerance from what we'll need to reflow. So if you want to be really, really, really nitpicky and, uh, you know, get it within, you know, what would that be? 0 0.3 millimeter tolerance or something like that. You can, can drive yourself all sorts of crazy, or you can just get it to where you know it's going to work and, uh, move on to the next step. Um, so that actually is going to work just fine. And yeah, it's, it's really well within tolerance. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to take uh, the tools that I talked about in the other video. I went over all the different tools that I'm going to be using here. And one of the most important tools is a liquid flux with a syringe dispenser. So we're going to go ahead and just put flux across all the pins there. This is called drag soldering. And that's what we're going to be doing. I'm using a chisel tip, by the way, with a WESD51 soldering station. And this is a PES51 soldering wand. It's nothing special. It's just kind of my go-to uh, soldering wand. It's been around for a long time. There's probably better ones on the market nowadays, but it does the job quite well, as you will see here. And one thing you can do if, if you're really skilled with your holding down the board at the same time or using a PCB holder, so you can actually add solder while you're going across. Save yourself a little bit of time. Not the easiest thing to do, so you know don't expect that uh, you'll be doing this as fast as I am. I've been doing quite a lot of these too. But um, yeah, have a little patience and you'll you'll notice it'll it'll go by pretty quickly. So the next thing we want to do is clean off the flux. And pretty much whenever we put flux down, we're gonna want to clean it right after with some IPA, isopropyl alcohol. And the sooner you do it, the easier it comes off. So um, I'm gonna apply some IPA to a Q-tip here. And you'll notice under the microscope, you might see a couple little stray hairs from the Q-tip. Nothing to worry about. It's uh, also not usually visible to the naked eye. And if you really worry about that and you cannot stand that for some reason, you can always invest in the uh, foam, uh, kind of a lintless foam Q-tips that you can buy for uh, medical. Actually, you can see there I didn't actually leave any hairs, but the uh, the foam ones are very, very nice, but they're expensive. Um, they're, they're, I think, uh, ten more than 10 times the cost of my Q-tips here. Uh, probably about 50 times the cost. So I don't use them unless it's super necessary. And you can see there, it cleaned up quite nice. And so that's it for step one of getting uh, that board pre-prepped for installing the uh, virtual ribbon, the rest of the virtual ribbon. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take one of these, uh, sort of a magnifying piece that the LED array goes into. And this is what actually slides when you're moving the uh, the focus, I forget what the name is they use for it in the Virtual Boy, but uh, this is what you're actually sliding. And it's, uh, you know what, actually I jumped ahead a step. We have to remove the old ribbon, that's the next step. So uh, removing the old ribbon, I went over in the last video, but I'm gonna go over it under the microscope here in a little more detail. Again, this is just to assist people doing self-installs and giving a better visual. Um, this part is a little toxic because of the adhesive residue that's left behind with the original ribbon cable and uh, and of course the mixture of solder and flux as well so you're going to get a fair amount of fumes and so it is important to have a fume extractor also wear gloves uh, safety first uh, this is a 493 fume extractor make a little bit of noise while i'm recording but shouldn't be too much and i'm going to go ahead and do this with the microscope even though it's not really necessary uh, but this is just to Again, give give a better visual of uh, of what's really going on, and and show you all what's happening. And by the way, now that I'm here, I can actually explain why I don't recommend uh, trying to like repair the original ribbon cable. Uh, I did a video on this a while back, maybe a couple months ago, and you can see here just how incredibly uh, thin these uh, 
these these uh, this this copper is here and the the discoloration that's actually taking place just from age because uh, copper can kind of oxidize and also it's got that glue behind it and it's just really really uh, really thin stuff um, and uh, this glue on the back by the way is what kind of wears out over time. Um, it's not a super strong adhesive, though some of these, about 50% of these, I do actually have to break it off completely. And I'll probably start with that here. But um, it's just it's just a very uh, questionable connection uh, to begin with. And then it's relying on an adhesive underneath this to make connection with these copper traces, which are high quality, you know, regular copper traces. So what the virtual ribbon, of course, does is it continues that high quality copper connection without adhesives and other sort of hacky means of um, of a connection. And of course, replaces this 25 year old oxidizing questionable, very thin copper ribbon cable with a modern uh, flat flex cable that is uh, much higher quality. So what we're gonna do here is first uh, start off with making sure that the original glue is completely off. Uh, and by off, I just mean not connected to the actual ribbon. Um, and you'll see here, it's got a little bit connected to the ribbon still. There's a couple ways you can go about this. You can use an X-Acto knife and kind of chip it away from the ribbon cable. Or what I'm gonna do, which I think is a little bit easier here, is I'm just gonna lay the board flat and then cut it away from the PCB itself. Keeping in mind that I'm not concerned about damaging this ribbon cable at all. It's actually going into the trash uh, because it's going to be replaced with something much better. Now this step is optional. It just makes it a little bit easier to remove that ribbon in the next step because we're gonna be using flux. And basically what we're doing is making sure that when we're removing the ribbon, we're removing one of the adhesives, which is the one over the traces um, using flux and not two adhesives at the same time just makes life a little bit easier. So with that done, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this fan, which is a, it's a carbon filter to remove some of the fumes. And I'm gonna put a bead of flux down and you know you don't have to do too much. I'm probably gonna do more than necessary here, but you wanna get it over the ribbon cable and a little bit on the actual traces as well, if you can. And then, uh, I'm gonna start off with a little bit of solder on the corner here. And I mentioned this in the last video, but the one thing you really wanna watch out for, not the end of the world, but it can be an annoyance, is you wanna to try not to get solder or flux into this hole or this hole. The reason why, especially this hole, you can see it's actually plated. There's actually metal in there. And so you can actually clog this with solder and then have a hard time putting your board on. Uh, if that happens, you'll need to use some uh, desoldering braid, most likely like this, and uh, and remove that clogged solder. So it's very fixable. It's not the end of the world. It's just an annoyance that you can avoid by being a little bit careful in this step. And so you'll see my iron is right above that hole, but not touching it. And, oh, looks like I cut a little bit too well with the X-Acto. And so I'll have to kind of manually go here and scrape away these this ribbon cable. That's okay. Not the end of the world. Being a little bit too thorough on camera here. Uh, but ideally what you'll do is you'll actually lift up the old traces by pulling up the cable with your, in this case with my left hand, because I'm right-handed, and then using my right hand to heat up the rest of the board. And you'll see that's how it generally works. And the flux is helping to thermally conduct and heat up more surface area. So this is by far not the cleanest I have done this, but that's okay. In the next step, I'll show you how to clean up your work. So I'm gonna go over here. And what I'm gonna do is, I actually have a fair amount of flux there, so I'm just gonna use the solder and the flux, and I'm just gonna very, very gently scrape away. You don't have to apply any pressure. Um, you'll see stuff just comes off real easy like that. And I'm gonna use some, uh, 
soldering iron tip cleaner, that kind of uh, bra that kind of mesh stuff, to uh, deposit these remaining traces, which I'll clean out later. And uh, just kind of go through here, get rid of those, clean off the tip, come back. And what I'm doing right now is just getting rid of the actual traces of the ribbon cable that were left behind before I go in and get rid of the actual adhesive that was left behind. And what we're doing is we're preparing this board for the virtual ribbon. We're, we're basically preparing it to be uh, soldered onto. All right. All right, so we still have a fair amount of flux there. I'm gonna see if I can actually get away without applying new flux and just kind of go along here, maybe put in a little more solder. And we're also trying to tin these pads with fresh solder. That's our other goal here. So we're trying to remove old adhesive and tin the pads. You can do that in two steps if you wanna clean off the flux and then go back and tin everything with new flux. Um, in fact, if your flux is not really good quality, I would really recommend doing that. But um, I'm using pretty good quality stuff, so I'm not too concerned. If I need to, I will. But uh, so far, it's working out pretty well. That area was a little bit finicky. Yeah, it'll look really nasty right now because of the flux and the uh, melted adhesive, and that's why we'll go in with our q-tip and if you want to be very economical you can probably re reuse the uh, the tip that you put alcohol on before because there's not that much flux you're cleaning off of that connector that ribbon cable connector the first time anyway and you'll see there's all the gunk that we're getting off here be pretty gentle um, I sort of emphasized this in the previous video that you don't want to uh, damage these traces. Um, so feel free to be gentle, you know, just kind of a gentle sweeping motion. And um, patience is key, you know, if something's not coming up right away, just go back over it again with another cotton swab. Nice thing about using cotton swabs is they cost almost nothing. And you'll see there's a little bit of gunk there on the top. Not sure if that's, oh yeah, no, that was still adhesive left over. All right, so that was the first pass. And cleaned up fairly nice, actually, but I'm gonna go over it one more time just to be on the safe side. And I'm just applying fresh solder making sure everything is tinned as best as it can be. So that when the, uh, the new virtual ribbon is attached, it'll have a really nice connection. Now you'll see when you do this, that some stuff will kind of have a little bit of a bubble, a little bit of a contour, you know, topology to the solder. And we want to get rid of that as much as possible because our new board is going to sit flush against this. And, you know, mostly flush. There's going to be solder, of course, there. But the flatter we can get it, the easier the next step is going to be. So what I usually do is I just I wipe my, my tip off in my uh, Hako tip cleaner here. And then, you know, that kind of cleans the solder off my, my iron tip. And then I go back and kind of go over it like a painter's brush. And what that does is that makes sure that your iron will collect the excess solder while leaving the pads still tinned. And then you can wipe off that excess solder. The reason it does that, by the way, is because solder is attracted to heat. And as long as your iron is the hottest thing around, chicka bow wow, it'll, uh, <laughs> it'll take the solder, the excess solder with it. And again, being uh, pretty light on the pressure here, no sense in uh, over over uh, overdoing it. Let's see a little bit. This is a step, by the way, where it doesn't hurt to uh, use your eyeballs instead of the microscope, because the microscope is not the best at picking up, uh, you know, vertical height differences because it's facing straight down. 
you can kind of bend, you know, do an angle like that, but also using your eyeballs works quite well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the fan for a sec, apply some more isopropyl alcohol. And I actually need to refill my bottle here. Go ahead and move the camera down to the workbench so you can see what I'm doing without the microscope. I'm just going to be putting some more isopropyl alcohol in my syringe dispenser container here, by the way. These little tools are really, really wonderful. I'm so glad they're coming out with stuff like this nowadays that's uh, easily accessible to the general public and the hobbyist market. It's definitely made my life a lot easier. A lot of great inventions coming out of China and other overseas countries that we are benefiting from here in the United States. And uh, all right, so um, that looks pretty darn nice. And um, I'll, I'll go and show on the monitor up here. I'll be swapping back and forth a lot, but you see it looks really clean. No complaints there. And uh, yeah, I wish I wish the light wasn't quite so strong on here that's making it hard for you to see. In real life, it's of course that that uh, is not quite so bright. But um, now we've got it all nice and clean and pretty much uh, completely flush or flat there, so we can put our new board down. As it were, it'll go down like so and be flush. And so now I'm going to move over to this handy broken Virtual Boy uh, display holder. LED array holder, which is what you'll be installing yours in eventually, just within the whole unit. And you'll notice these little uh, these little plastic pins that stick up are what is one of them is going to go through uh, the the hole that was plated that I was talking about. So as long as those holes didn't get clogged with anything, the board should snap down pretty easily. And for the next step here, I actually strongly encourage everyone to put a screw in to hold the board in um, because that'll make this next part much, much easier. Uh, because I've been doing a lot of these, I'm feeling, uh, maybe I'm feeling overly confident, but I've been doing it without the screw and it's been working out great. Uh, the reason I've been doing it without the screw is I don't want us to destroy the threads because I was screwing, you know, putting the screw back in, in and out too many times and you know it can destroy the plastic threads if you do that. Um, so I'm not going to use a screw but I'll show you what I'm doing and just pretend that there's one there. So the first step is after we get that all set up I'll move back to our microscope here and we're gonna take our virtual ribbon board and we're going to take the part with the near where it says this, which is the longer extending side, and put a little bit of solder down. We're just tinning this basically. Doing a little bit more on the top as well. That's going to help us with our first application of this board. It's basically going to be a the first time we mount it on, we want it to uh, be easy to mount. And I'm going to go ahead and put some flux across our flattened pins on the LED PCB. Um, I showed that before, so I'm not showing that again because you get the idea. And I'm going to zoom in real close here. You'll see it's got a bunch of flux on it now. And we're going to start with the upper right corner here. I'm going to put a little bit of lighting on here too, actually. Get a little better view. And what we want to do is with the version, we want to get that flush with the plastic. So we're getting the vertical height basically down first. Uh, flush with the plastic on the right as well as on the left there, the black plastic and the purple PCB. And, and then after we do that, we're going to align things as best as we can. And so I mentioned in the last video, you'll probably be using a magnifying headset or one of those 10x uh, magnifying glasses if you don't have a microscope. And the theory is the same, though. 
just easier with a microscope. What you'll do is you'll look for the part where there's two pins together, these power rails, and you'll use that as your alignment because that will let you know that the pins aren't like shifted over or something like that. And you can see here everything is pretty pretty nicely aligned. And so what you what I do now is I go and I put my iron on that part that we tinned to make a nice hold. Now you'll know this is going right when this when the flux kind of squeezes out from the bottom as you see there. Um, that's how you know you're doing it right, and it's pretty flush against everything. One of the other advantages of doing this with gloves is it doesn't heat up as fast and you're less likely to burn your hand. So um, I think that did it pretty darn well. Looks like it did. Everything is on there really good. But if you want to be extra, extra thorough, what you can do is tilt it. And especially using a microscope, you can actually see where the contacts are. And aha. Yep, no, everything actually looks good. Sometimes you get a little weird. Uh, but you'll see the uh, this kind of uh, orangish. Let's see if I can point that out. You can actually see where the contacts land on the on the original traces. Let's see if I can point that out. You see right in here. You can see the contact right there, right there, and all across it. And you'll see it's like fairly flush. I mean, it's really close. And what you're looking for is to make sure this copper here is you know not in the middle right where it could potentially bridge two pins or if it's really off center um, and of course you have a pretty small tolerance there you do have some wiggle room but not a lot and that's why this microscope helps enormously and actually here you can see it even more because the light is hitting the the copper that copper is on the underside of the pcb so what we're doing is we're actually heating up these traces and letting the, the solder flow downwards onto the underside of this board so that everything gets soldered nicely and makes a really, really strong connection. Now the next step we're going to do is we're actually going to apply some pressure and heat and solder to get this. You see how there's a little bit of wiggle room there? We're going to put some solder on that and push that down while soldering it. Now that kind of wiggle room is not, not super important, like this would work either way but it'll just make for a more solid connection. To do this step, I do actually prefer to take it out of the frame, um, just because less chance of melting any plastic since, uh, you know, it's getting a little bit hot and um, we don't actually need the frame. The frame was just used for alignment for that first part. So what I'll do here is I'll apply a little bit of solder like we did before. And again, this is where the gloves come in handy. I'm going to actually squeeze the two pieces together, the glove's going to insulate my hand from the heat. And uh, so that'll apply the pressure while I apply the heat with my soldering iron. Like so. Whew, gets a little hot though, even with the gloves. And now it's down there and it's on pretty darn good. You'll see there, it's right flush against the PCB. Cool. So if you want to be extra careful, you're more than welcome to do a little extra step and just see if everything fits nicely back in the frame. And in this case it does. I'll point the camera down so you can see. You know, just showing that uh, after I've done all the alignment, everything is aligned perfectly. It's totally flat, totally flush. Everything looks really nice. So now we can start with the rest of the pins on that board and getting them all soldered properly. Um, side note, this uh, there's some text here that's actually printed in a black ink, which will often come off when you use the uh, isopropyl alcohol q-tips don't worry about it but if you see some black on your q-tips that's what it, that's what it's from so for this step this is actually the most important part getting this all honed in and once you if you have the alignment right this part shouldn't be shouldn't be very hard if you don't have the alignment right it's a little bit harder but I'm gonna put a little bit of flux across the top here actually and then even more flux in the base. 
And the goal here is to get the soldering iron into the crevice between the two boards and apply a lot of heat and a lot of solder so the solder flows from the bottom uh, so from from the from the traces on this board to the bottom of the new purple PCB and in addition what I'm going to do is actually apply some heat on the top as well because they are thermally and electrically connected to these top traces and so that will help that process as well a little bit optional, but highly recommended. It seems that installs go much easier when I do this. And so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fan back on because this can produce a little bit of fumes. And what I've noticed is uh, the, two, the, the two edges are the parts where you really wanna apply the most heat. Um, at least that's been my experience, the most helpful areas. So yeah, I'm just gonna go here and I, I usually use quite a bit of solder and uh, I'll flip my iron around because the solder is actually collecting on the bottom more. And it's not too hard. You just kind of go in. You can apply a little bit of extra pressure on the top. And then you just kind of drag solder it and keep applying more solder. Like so. Like so, like so. And, um, yeah, you just go on down the line. Holding it for a few seconds to give the solder time to flow to the underside of the PCB. And make sure to get your iron all the way over the, the very last pin here on the corner because that's the one that I historically found. I used to kind of not put my iron all the way over it and it didn't get hot enough so the solder didn't go under. So uh, yeah, make sure to do that. And of course the, the pins over here are just for the tab. They're just holding the side down. So where you see that white line there, that's the end of the connections that you have to worry about actually making contact. And I'm usually really thorough. I think a, a one pass would actually more or less do it for this, but I like to be extra thorough in this step because what I'm going to do is actually use alcohol to clean off all this flux. And if I don't do it correctly, I have to re redo the flux um, and redo the cleaning, which is, you know, hardly the end of the world, but it's just a easy way to save some time by doing it right the first time. Making sure the connections are really solid. Again, being careful of those holes. You don't want to get any solder in those holes because uh, you'll have to clean that out with desoldering braid. Just time-saving stuff. Looks pretty good. So I'll do a quick check, make sure nothing's bridged. If something is bridged, you just apply a little more flux and unbridge it with your iron. Uh, the lighting a little better there. Sorry about that. The lighting wasn't as good as it could have been. Get my Q-tip here. Turn off the fan. I'm actually going to apply a little more isopropyl alcohol. If you see a little more hairs coming off of the uh, Q-tip than you'd like, a lot of times the alcohol can help with that a little bit. And... Uh, And there's two reasons I'm doing this right now. So the, the alcohol is m this kind of flux cleaning. It's, it's mostly aesthetic, but the other reason I'm primarily doing it is because I'm going to be testing this with my multimeter leads, and I don't want to get a bunch of flux on those leads. Um, it's not like it's going to destroy them or anything. It's just a bit annoying. And I'm going to do one more pass with the alcohol and a fresh side of the Q-tip. You'll see it still picked up a fair amount of flux there. 
that was left over from the first pass. And it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to take my multimeter, I'm going to put it into the audible beep test mode. As I pointed out in the previous video, I'm going to be using these very fine point uh, multimeter tip leads, which I will show you here. Extremely fine point, like they actually can puncture skin if you push down too hard. They're very, very sharp and very useful. They're only about 10 bucks, so I highly recommend them for your multimeter. I use them all the time now. And they're very good for this test because of the very, very fine pitch on this connector. So I'm really glad I can show you all this with, uh, with a better, um, better camera set up here now. Because this part is important, and it was hard to show with the last video. What you want to do is just you know check the connections, and then you do what's called walking it down, where you keep holding on the previous connection, but then you move one of the, one of the leads to the next one. And what that tells you is that things are not shorted that a connection is there once you move it back, once you move it to the correct one. Correct? Not short of the next one? Correct? And this is called walking it down. And it's a little tedious, but it's super important. Because this is what tells you that you did a correct job. And of course if one of these is off, it's not like your virtual boy is going to blow up or something, but it's you're still going to have display problems. And the whole point of this of course is to fix lines in the display. Cool. Move on to the power one. That one's fine. You'll notice that this is the only time, so take a firm note of this, this is the only time when you'll have two pins that do not look like they're supposed to be connected, but they are. And that is this first, you know, right under the S here from for version 3.3. Uh, .3. And um, yeah, these three pins are actually connected. So Keep that in mind. Everyone else, all the other ones though are not. So don't worry if, if you get, you know, that one instance of uh, bridging. Fine, fine. And my guess is those are different grounds. There's a signal ground and a power ground. Fine, fine. All right, looks good, looks good, looks good. If you have a little more time and you want to use a PCB holder that they sell, um, that can make that go by a little faster, a little easier too. And uh, we're done with our first half of the install, which is actually the hardest part. So the next part is applying that second board with the connector that we installed. And that part is not too hard. So what we do is we go back here and we put in our newly installed upgrade keeping in mind again that if either of those holes on the left or right and the top are clogged that this won't go in easily so just make sure you keep those cleaned if they are clogged and you'll look here and you'll see there's some solder points and we're going to be attaching this board to that uh, to those pins. And again, I highly recommend putting in a screw to hold this in place. Uh, in fact, I would say it's more or less required unless you've done this a bunch of times like I have. But because I've done this a bunch of times and I'm good with holding down PCBs with my hands, um, I'm not going to do that. Or at least I'm going to try not to do that. If I have to, I will. But uh, actually first, before I do that, I need to tin the uh, I usually start, I usually do the far right corner because I'm right handed. That's a little bit easier for me. So I'm going to tin the right pad there. You really want to make sure, by the way, that this is flat and it's fully against the, uh, the black plastic there. And then you want to get the alignment going there. And uh, this part, you can use your magnifying headset or your eyes if you have good vision. Um, the, the pitch is uh, larger, so it's not quite as hard as what we just did. 
and you want to make sure the two boards are flush against each other as well as the, uh, the LED PCB is flush against the black plastic as mentioned just a second ago and let's see this is I'm making this harder on myself by not using that screw so don't be like me use the screw for some reason this is having aha this uh, this particular board which is a 3.3 I've actually not come across this with all the installs I did um, there is a problem with this one and this is a very minor thing but I'll show it to you so you can see there is a little tiny mouse bite on the edge there. That's why it wasn't aligning. Not actually seen that yet. It's the first time I've seen that with one with this new batch. And all you gotta do is just use some wire cutters, nail file, whatever you want, and just uh, cut it off. Um, making sure that it's nice and flush. Um, alternatively, if you have a, a Dremel, like rotary tool, that's even more ideal which I do have, and I'm just gonna sand that down real quick with a Dremel. But you could sand it down with a nail file or whatever. You can even use an X-Acto knife um, if you get a little mouse bite like that. So I'm gonna go here and Take my little sander here. That's it. And now we are back in business. It's all nice and flat there. Cool. So now I'm going to go back to what we were doing a second ago. All right, make sure everything's flush. And now I can actually slide this across and it looks good. See if I can do this in the microscope too, actually. Oh, I can. The microscope does everything. Haha, <laughs> very cool. So I'll make it easier for you all to see what I'm doing. I'm just making sure that those pins are aligned. And just as before, we're going to start with the corner to kind of mount it best. And go in there with my soldering iron. Come on, gotta give it a little more solder on there. There we go. All right. And so you'll see the alignment looks really nice. Um, you have a you have a little more wiggle room with this alignment than the previous one, but it looks good. And if you look at the uh, the side here, everything is perpendicular, super flush, super flat. Looks terrific. So now what I'm going to do, get rid of our, uh, take it out of, the, out of the, the mounting guide, as it were, the black plastic. And show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do, I usually do the, uh, the tab on the other side because those are just nice and sturdy ways to do it. And after you do the tab on the other side, it's worth just popping it back in one more time, just making sure nothing changed on the alignment when you did that. I mean, it really shouldn't, but if you want to be extra thorough, make sure everything's good before you do the last bit of drag soldering. And you just put a bead of flux across here. A 
if my uh, my camera will be nice. There we go. More or less. That should work. And we are going to check our work with the microscope. But um, yeah, so I'm going to go in there. Lots of solder. In this part, you want to do lots and lots of solder. Lots of flux. Because you're actually kind of bridging a very small gap as well. And uh, what I find, again, is the, uh, the far corners, the very last pin on each side is the trickiest part to get the solder on. And, you know, if you have to go back and double check or whatever, it's not a big deal. A little bit of patience. So I'm going to zoom out here and show what it looks like on the microscope. Uh, on the microscope display, so you can get a better idea of what I just did. And I can check my work. And you'll see there... Everything is nice and bridged. As far, so far, so good anyway. Let's see if we get to the very end if there's a problem. But no, looks good. And yeah, it's the ones in the very end that sometimes you have to double check. But you're just making sure that the solder is, you know, connecting across all those pins. And do a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Clean off the flux. Again, this is pretty optional, more, mostly aesthetic and to keep from getting sticky stuff on your hands when you're handling the board. Not exactly an essential feature. But if we look down now, it looks pretty nice. And so this is essentially done. Uh, one thing I do, I, I'll usually test it. I recommend testing it first. Um, but I will, um, I'm fairly confident in this. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the, uh, the last bit of solder for these last mounts underneath. This is totally optional. It's just kind of like extra, extra thorough durability that is totally unnecessary, but why not? Because I'm, you know, as I've been saying, this is this is intended as an ultra permanent solution, not as a stopgap for a few years. This is meant to keep your LED array connected forever. And you'll see there, that's really not going anywhere. I mean, that's super, super sturdy. I'll try to show real quick uh, to just the, uh, the ribbon cable connection, because that is one other thing to be uh, a little bit mindful of before I wrap up the video here. And I'm going to go back to our microscope for this. Hopefully nobody's getting nauseous there with the back and forth and the microscope to real world view there. But uh, we have this connector here. And this is a specialized connector that I have to special order and is hard to come by. And it is uh, made to go with this flat flex ribbon cable. Um, or with one that's the same spec, but what I actually found was that the cable does not fit a hundred percent super snug like it should due to just like manufacturing compatibility stuff and you'll see here on the right it's a little bit more out or sorry on the bottom what you're looking at if you're watching this video so on the bottom, it's a little bit more sticking out than it is on the top. Let me get the lighting here a little better too. Um, and I just wanted to point that out as so there's the bottom, there's the top, and you'll see it's not sticking out. You know, it's not quite. So in a perfect world, this would actually fit within the nub here on the top and the bottom. Um, I've not been able to source a cable that actually does hundred percent you know fit in those nubs there is a very very slight gosh what is that you know maybe a 0.3 millimeter difference there but um for all intents and purposes if you get that alignment and snap it down it will work just fine and you'll just notice that blue strip is a little bit very slightly angled but it will work just fine um 
And as you can probably tell from this video, I'm a major perfectionist. So I was disappointed that I couldn't couldn't find a manufacturer, but I'm gonna keep looking and I'm gonna look for a manufacturer that has a cable that's that slight, slight width difference. Because I would like to have this be, you know, I don't know. I guess it makes it a little easier to install, but it's not uh, hardly the end of the world. Works great, and uh, when you go to test this and install it, of course you'll you'll put this back in. You'll you'll put the two screws back in. I do show some of that in my other video. Plus, you can find videos on how to take out this this LED board. There's a grounding uh, kind of tab that goes on the bottom there too. And uh, and then what I do is I just fold the cable like so. This part goes under the uh, the motherboard plastic, and then fold it back and it just plugs straight into the connector on the motherboard. And the advantage of doing it this way is when you're sliding it, you're not putting any vertical strain on the flat flex cable at all, which is exactly what you want. Uh, that way you don't risk popping up this connector, any sort of connection issue down the road. Super, super durable. And ideally, the goal intended is to be a permanent, 100% permanent repair for your virtual ribbon LED array and display. So hopefully you found this video useful. Uh, feel free to leave any comments, additional questions. Um, I'll try to clarify stuff if I can. You can go to my website to order these and um, I'm gonna be ordering the third batch soon since the first two batches have sold out. Thank you everyone for your support in, uh, yeah, it's been really cool to see all the support this got and how much people have been enjoying it. And uh, there's been some really nice posts on Reddit as well. And I'm, I'm usually keeping the forums updated. I'm more active on the Virtual Boy forums than I am on the Reddit. But um, I try to check back you know, every once in a while. But uh, you can reach me by email. And uh, I have the prices and install cost all listed on my website. I'm still doing some installs, although I am trying to get away from them because it's just you know time that I don't necessarily have. But um, if you're patient and you're willing to wait, I can do an install for you. And you can check out my website in the link in the description for the prices for that and uh, contact me by email if you're interested. And uh, that's pretty much it.